Say, the Lord is good. good. Say, his mercy endures forever. Everybody say, give me Jesus. Are you guys ready for a Holy Ghost time today? How many are ready for the Spirit of the Lord to minister to you today? How many are excited that God knows exactly where you are, knows exactly what you need, right? And how many are ready for the Lord to speak to you in a very personal, very intimate way this morning? Amen. Pastor Michael can't do that, but God's Word can and the Holy Spirit can. Amen. And God promised us in the scriptures that the Holy Spirit's going to lead us and guide us into all truth. So today, how many need some answers in their life? How many need some direction in their life? How many believe God's going to do that today? Let's pray. Father, we just thank you for the word. We thank you for all the promises of God are yes and amen. We thank you for your purpose and your plan, the ultimate sovereign plan, the providential plan that you have for the universe, but also for the individual plan that you have for each and every one of us, Father. We thank you, Father, that we are people of purpose, people of destiny. Father, we thank you, Lord God, that our path, as your word says, is to get brighter and brighter. So today we believe for revelation, inspiration, answers to come. Father, let your word, as it says, the entrance of your word gives light. And Father, we just thank you. We speak light in this place and we give you all the glory for the change that's going to happen in all of our lives, those that are here and those that are watching. In Jesus' name, and all God's people said, amen, amen. amen. Everybody say, what are you saying? What are you saying? In God's ears. In God's ears. All right. We're going to be talking. Is, we're just going to just see how the Lord's going to direct us. But we're going to be talking about confession. And I want you to go with me over to the book of Matthew, uh, Mark, the uh, 11th chapter, verse number 22. And we're going to just read here. And then there's a lot of scriptures. And we're in faith this morning. We're just trusting God. But I want you to see what the word of the Lord says here. This is a scripture that most of us are familiar with. This was uh, just after Jesus spoke to a fig tree. He was hungry. How many know Jesus was hungry? He saw a fig tree that was withered up. or, or you know, was It wasn't withered up. It was, uh, had leaves on it. And he thought there would be figs on it. And so Jesus goes to the fig tree and there's nothing there. And he spoke and he cursed. It's, the Bible says he answered the tree. See, the tree was speaking to him. The tree was saying something to him. How many know life says things to us? Our wallet says things to us. Our body says things to us. What you and I answer is going to determine what we're going to get in our life. And so he answered the tree. And he said, no man eat fruit from thee henceforth. Nothing seemed to happen. Nothing seemed to change. He walks into J Jerusalem, kicks people out of the temple, walks by the tree. Nothing seemed to happen. Nothing seemed to change. But the next day, they were walking by that tree, and Peter called Jesus. Jesus was just walking by it. When you're in faith, you don't need to look. You don't need to check. You just rest in the Word of God. He's walking by the tree, and all of a sudden, Peter says, Hey, Lord, the tree that you cursed is withered up and died. It's withered up from the roots. It's how many know that's where God's word works? He starts to work at the very root of the problem. God works in the unseen realm, and then it manifests in the seen realm. When Jesus spoke to the tree, it seemed like nothing happened. But something was happening. That word was going right to the very root of the problem and was beginning to wither up that tree. And so Peter says, hey, Lord, that tree you spoke to, it's withered up. And Jesus turns around and says to Peter, and he says, he answered him and said, have faith in God. Amen. Other translation says like this, have the God kind of faith. How many know God is a faith God? Amen. He operates in faith principles. And the primary way that God released his faith is by the spoken word. God said, let there be light and then light became. God calls things that are not as though they were. That's how God talks. You have to learn the language of God. God doesn't speak the is. God, he, he speaks as it, he speaks, he doesn't speak the present. He speaks what he wants to see. He said to Abraham, you're going to be, or he said, you're the father of a multitude, father of nations. He changed his name. God spoke into existence over a man that was old, his wife was old, and said, you are fruitful and you're going to be the father of a multitude. God calls things that are not as though they were. That's how God talks. God doesn't speak in the word. Were like, this is what's happening. This is what's going on. This is what's happening around me. My body's sick. I have no money. No, God speaks the end result. That's faith. 
And so when Jesus said to the disciples, have faith in God, or the Amplified says, have the God kind of faith. Everybody say the God kind of faith. Everybody say the God kind of faith. Well, Cassie, we're, Cassie, hold there. We're going to come back to that scripture, but I want you to go with me and while we're here. Just go over real quick, and we're going to go to, uh, let's see, it's Corinthians. One second, Cassie, I'll get it to you. How many love the word? Oh, we got it. Let me see here. <laughs> I got a lot of notes. All right. You guys excited today? All right. We're getting it. We're getting it. We're getting it. All right. I mean, my wife's glasses here. I rebuke in Jesus' name. All right. 2 Corinthians 4.13. Everybody say, God kind of faith. Everybody say, God kind of faith. God kind of faith gets God kind of results. So Jesus cursing the fig tree wasn't just because he was trying to be mean and he doesn't like trees. Right? He was trying to teach them a lesson. He's like, I'm going to teach you something here. Notice what Paul said here under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He said, we having the same Spirit of faith. Everybody say spirit of faith. Everybody say faith is a spirit. It is something that you and I have when you were born again. God gives unto us a spirit of faith. And the way that the spirit of faith is manifested, it says this. He says, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I what? Spoken. We also believe and therefore speak. The spirit of faith is a speaking spirit. We're speaking. Notice what the word speak is here, or spoken. Same Greek word, slide number 44. How many love the word? Amen. Everybody say, I got a spirit of faith. I got a spirit of faith. Got a spirit of faith. <laughs> the word, he says, I, he says, we have the same spirit of faith, therefore we speak, right? The word speak means this. It uses words in order to declare one's mind or declares one's thoughts. Faith is not to be dormant. Faith is to be expressed. You have to speak your faith. Everybody say, speak your faith. Speak your faith. faith is not quiet. Faith is speaking. Yes. Notice what it says here in Luke, the 17th chapter. I'm sorry, Cassie. I thought we were going back to Mark. We'll get there. Luke, the 17th chapter, verse number five. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. Everybody say, I love the word of the Lord. Love the word. Hallelujah. Everybody say, faith speaks. Faith speaks. Say, faith speaks. faith speaks. And faith speaks what you want to see happening in your life. Notice what Jesus said here. He said, the disciples or the apostles said unto the Lord, increase our faith. Everybody say, increase our faith. Increase our faith. Everybody say, increase our faith. increase our faith. Now notice this, verse number six, it goes on to say, he said, and the Lord said, if you had faith, if you got real faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you might say unto this sycamine tree, be thou plucked up from the root and be thou planted in the sea and it should obey you. He said, if you had faith, you'd be speaking to something. Notice that scripture. I want you to see it. Slide 45. This is the Young's literal transla translation. It's really good. I like this particular one. Yeah. And it said, and the Lord said, if you had faith as a grain of a mustard seed, you would have said yeah. to the sycamine tree, be uprooted, be planted to the sea, and it would have obeyed you. If you got faith, you and I should be speaking. You would be saying something over your life. You need to be and I need to be decreeing and declaring over our lives, speaking words. Go back to that scripture, Mark eleven twenty two. How many love the word of the Lord? How many are ready for God to give us some answers today? How many of one word from God can change your life? One adjustment. You ever go to a good chiropractor? You walk in like this, you walk out like that. Well, I believe today some of you are going to walk out straight, and purposeful, glory to God. Got some answers. Notice what Jesus said. He said again, answer about the fig tree. Remember the story. He said, answer them. Have faith in God. Another translation says, have the God kind of faith. Now look at how God's faith works and what he's encouraging us. Slide, uh, verse number 23. How many love the word? Amen. We getting it today. Everybody say, we're getting it today. He said, for verily I say unto you, that whosoever, everybody say whosoever. whosoever. He's not just talking to the disciples here. He's talking to everybody. He said, whosoever shall do what? Say unto what? This mountain. How many got a mountain in their life? Yeah. Be what? Be thou removed. Be thou cast into the sea. Shall not doubt in his heart. 
but shall believe that those things which he what saith, he shall what? Come to pass, he shall have whatever he what? Saith. You know, uh, this scripture right here, uh, one of my uh, mentors, if you want to use that terminology, one of my teachers, one of, the, uh, one of my favorite teachers that really imparted into me was Brother Kenneth E. Hagin. And uh, it was a, a blessing to me. I remember being a 17-year-old boy, a young Christian, and all of a sudden I started reading the book. It had a manual, actually I got it, and it was a faith manual. And it was a bunch of Brother Hagin's messages on faith. And they were just short messages. And it started to stir something in my spirit, stir something in my heart. And he, he tells in one of his, uh, how this happened. And in fact, I was just listening to a tape the other, uh, it was an old teaching of him. He must have, it must have been back in the 60s or 70s. And he was relating how God revealed this scripture to him in a greater way. He said he was at a church and he was ministering. And he said he was just, you know, the habit that he had, he just, he would fast on Tuesdays and Thursdays. And so he, would, uh, he, he, he was fasting. He said, you know, I was just, uh, you know, and then the Lord put it on my heart to start just reading through the Gospel of Mark, he said, you know. And he said, I was going through the Gospel of Mark, and I would just go through it, and I'm just thinking about it, meditating on it. And he said, I got to the 16th chapter of Mark, and the Gospel of Mark is, it talks about how that, you know, with these signs shall follow them that believe, you know, and that, you know, he works together with us. And so he said, I was laying on the floor, just, you know, getting quiet and just meditating. How many know meditating is a good thing? Getting quiet before the Lord. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes we're wondering, God, speak to me, but you're speaking to yourself so much, God can't get through. Yeah. <laughs> it's almost like a radio station's got so much static, you know. You almost need to go, I need to get fine-tuned so I can hear the Lord. The Bible says in the book of Psalms, be still and know that I'm God, right? God reveals to us and speaks to us in those quiet places. He said he seals his instruction when we have deep rest, deep sleep. He speaks to us in our Shiloh. That's where they received direction from the Lord was at Shiloh. They would cast lots before God. Shiloh means a place of rest. When you and I get quiet before God, God can start speaking to you. So Brother Hagin said he was, he was just there. He said, I was just meditating. How many know that's a good thing? Meditate means to mutter. Speak to yourself. How I many know Christians should be speaking to, they should think we're crazy sometimes, you know? You, you ever been like in a big city or something, or it could be a little city, you just see somebody walking on the street, and blah, 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 blah. they're just talking to themselves. How I many know Christians, we should be talking to ourselves, glory to God. We should be spiritually, not crazy, but it's a, it's a principle. You should be declaring your, Lord, I just meditating in the word. Father, we just thank you for your promises. Thank you, Father. Because God told Joshua, if you'll do that, you'll meditate on the word day and night. He said, then you'll have good success and then you'll make your way prosperous. So you got to talk to yourself. You got to keep speaking the word, speaking the promises of God, speaking what God says over you. So he's just laying there and he said, you know, and Cassie, you're doing great. Keep that scripture up. <laughs> he goes, oh, Lord, I'm just, just thinking about it. And he said, all of a sudden, he goes, I was thinking about the 16th chapter. And the Lord said, hey, do you know that scripture over there? He said, it wasn't like you heard a voice. How I many of God's not, some of you might, but most of the time, just your heart, right? That's where God speaks to us. You know, people are looking for God to speak to us out here. But the Bible says the spirit of man is the candle of the Lord. God speaks to us here. The candle is the place where God lightens up. It's light, gives light. So he said, also the Lord said, do you, do, you, do you know that scripture? He said over there in Mark eleven twenty three. he says, yeah, I know that scripture. And Brother Hagin was funny because he, he, he prided himself. He goes, I, pri I, read the, I read through the Bible a thousand times and I, I must have preached that scripture 10,000 times. He's just, he's, yeah, Brother Hagin, he was very, he had a very, um, uh, his memory was very good. And the Spirit of God would just bring through his memory because he could quote scripture after scripture. And so he says, the Lord said, That's, do you notice in that scripture that I only said believe one time? And I, I talked about saying three times. He said, no, Lord, I didn't see that. And so he had to go back there and look it over. And, the, and sure enough, he said, he read it and he said, surely, I, really, very I say unto you. That's Jesus talking, so you've got to cancel that one. He said, if anyone will say, this us, us, one, unto this mountain, be thou removed, and be thou cast into his heart, and shall believe, if there's one believe, believe that those things which he, what, saith, shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he, what, saith. So the Lord said to him, he said, do you notice it's three times saying and one time believing? And the Lord he said, yeah. And the Lord said, you, we need to be teaching three times as much on the saying part than the, the believing part. Now, you need, don't get me wrong. You got to believe, right? If you're, gonna, you're not believing. But the saying, because the saying part is the part that you and I are going to have problems with. 
And, and, and so many times we don't realize the power and the effect that our word has. And we need to get a hold of this. We need to get a hold of this. And I, I, like I said, this is something uh, that I, when I was like 17, 16, I started getting a hold of the faith word, speaking the word of God, speaking my faith. And, and I've been, this has been years now. I don't want to tell my age, but it's been quite a few years. <laughs> right? I'm, I'm a little bit beyond 17. And I'm still getting sharpened in this area. Right? So we're going to just encourage ourselves here, and we're going to talk about this, about the power of our words. All right, so let's go to the book of Numbers, and we're going to go to the 14th chapter, and we're going to start with verse number 26. How many love the word of the Lord? Amen. Everybody say, God kind of faith. God kind of faith. Say, my words, have power. my words have power. See, I have a spirit of faith. I, have a spirit of faith. I, believe. I believe, therefore I speak. Right? If you're in faith, you're speaking over your life. You're speaking over your body. You're not speaking what you see. You're speaking what you want to happen in your life. You're speaking your faith. You're calling things that are not as though they were. You say, well, Pastor, again, we'll just see how much the Lord lets us teach on this. How many know you just got to be led? But, but there's a principle. The Bible says in the book of Joel, he said, let the weak say, I'm weak. I'm discouraged. I'm beat up. I'm tired. No, what, what is the weak supposed to say? I'm strong. Why are you supposed to speak you're strong? Because it's the principle of faith. If you want strength to come in your life, God's strength to come in your life, you need to speak the end result. You can't speak where you are because if you do, it's only going to perpetuate the problem. You need to speak your faith. Let the weak say, I am strong. What should the poor say? I'm poor, got no money, <laughs> never going to never gonna get a good job. Life is hard, it's stinky. What should the poor say? I'm rich. What should the person that's like, I don't know what to do. You can't keep confessing. I don't know what to do. I don't know where to go. I don't know up from down. I don't know where to go. I don't know what to do. No, that person should be confessing by faith. I know what to do. My path is getting brighter and brighter in Jesus' name. I'm walking in the peace of God. I'm blessed coming and going. God's with me. And even if I'm missing it, I'll hear a voice behind me and the Lord will say, this is the way, walk ye in it. Glory to God. Are you guys hearing me this morning? All right, let's go to book, look at this. So, so this is an interesting story. And we're, we're, we're going to see how the Lord, I, I'm hoping I can get to the 13th chapter and really, but I wanted you just to see this here first, then we'll jump back. And the Lord spake unto Moses saying, and unto Aaron saying, Verse number 27. He said, as you, how long will I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I have heard their murmurings of the children of Israel which they murmur against me. So this, this is, when you get God to the point where he's like, I'm done. How long, how long can I put up, bear these people? Care, how can I take this? This, and he, notice the, the terminology. This is God talking. He said, the, the evil, they're murmuring against him. Notice the word for murmuring. I want you to see it. Slide number nine. He said, how long can I take it? How long can I take the murmuring? The word murmuring here is the word, there's the Hebrew word. It means to complain. Sometimes we just think, well, complaining is, it's our option. It's our right to complain. It's our right. <laughs> No, you can complain. You're free to. We're free more of being. But it will not produce good in your life. Amen. He said, how long will I put up their, with their complaining? But notice what the word complain. It means complaining about something in a bad tempered way. You're, you're upset about it. Bad tempered. It means to express dissatisfaction or annoyance about something. And when you do that, this word goes, I love the last part of the word. It means when you do this, when you and I start to murmur, when you and I start to complain, when you and I start to just express constantly dissatisfaction, how annoyed you are about something, it causes you and I to stop, to stay permanently. And that's exactly what happened to the children of Israel. They did not go into the promised land. They stopped. It was God's purpose and God's plan to take them out of Egypt into the promised land. But because they were just constantly murmuring, complaining, 
expressing dissatisfaction, annoyance. How many know you and I have to just learn to roll with some things? Amen. Strong and bravely. Yeah. <laughs> Are you hearing me? You can't be so flubby, deba, 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 complaining about everything. It's not healthy. It's not good. It is actually detrimental to you and me. Are you hearing me, church family? Amen. And because they did that, they stopped, they remained, they didn't make it. We talked last week about the way. God said, remember the way that I led you. And the purpose was so that they could learn how to live by the word of God. And God gave them tests. He said, I allowed you to hunger. I allowed you to thirst. He was trying to teach them something. But they didn't learn it. Every single time the pressure came on, instead of trusting God, they complained. They murmured. Yeah. Now, this happened right from the beginning. They murmured. They complained. They didn't have any water. God already had a plan, but they murmured. They complained. They didn't have any food. They murmured. They complained. They saw the Egyptians. They murmured. They complained. They didn't like something. They murmured. They complained. Expressing dissatisfaction, annoyance. I'm, you're saying, Pastor, why are you preaching this? It's because I need it. Amen. And possibly, maybe, just a little bit, you need it. I, thank you, brother, for smiling so big. <laughs> you hear me? Is it possible? Is it possible Brother Hagin was onto something? We need, we got to watch. This is the area here because as you're going to see, our words have such power. Go to, the, go to the scripture, my dear sister Cassie. Didn't Cassie do an awesome job? Wasn't that great? Yeah. He said, how long will I bear with this evil congregation which murmur against me? I've heard the murmurings of the children of Israel. And notice this. They, were, they murmured against God. Go to verse number 28. Notice what God says here. How many love the word? Yeah. Verse 28. Say, this is what God told Moses to tell him. Say unto them, as truly as I live. This is God speaking. This is what God said to them. As truly as I live. How many are hearing this? As you have, tell them, tell them this. Say unto them, tell them this. Give them a message for me. Moses, you tell them this. As truly as I live, says the Lord, as you, as, as they have been speaking in my ears, that's what I'm going to do. So that's why the title of this message is, What are you saying in God's ears? What am I saying in God's ears? And listen, I don't throw, this is coming back at me. I've got this multiple times. I, I study it. I pray about it. I'm studying and I'm sharing it. I'm getting it. I'm getting hammered too. I don't stand before you as the grand poobah of the confession. <laughs> We've all have fallen short. <laughs> but we are here to encourage each other. Are you guys hearing me? I don't know about you. If you fall down, we're going to get back up. We're going to get this right because this is something. We don't want to stop permanently. Amen. Notice this. I want you to see this. Uh, Cass, let's put this up, uh, verse number 28. And um, let's look at that in the New Living Translation. I mean, love the word. New Living says it like this, as truly as I live, I will do to you, I will do to you the very things I heard you say. Now, let's make it, this is negative now, right? Yeah. They were speaking negatively. God said, I'll do it. You kept confessing you're going to die in the wilderness. I'll do it. I want you to realize we can turn this around and make this a positive too. Hallelujah. What are, he said, I'll do the very things I heard you say, I the Lord have spoken. Now put slide number 10 up, guys. I want you to see it. These are some different translations. This is uh, the common English Bible says this. God says, say to them, as I live, says the Lord. Just as I heard you say, just as I heard you say, so I'll do it to you. This translation, I don't know, I can't remember it off the top of my head, but it means, because I will do to you exactly as I heard you say. God's word translation says, I will do everything to you that you said I would do. How many are going to speak some, how many want to turn, listen, if you're speaking, I'm going to die. It's terrible. Things are never going to change. 
Do you want that to be happening in your life? No. You have to evaluate yourself and start saying, Lord, what am I saying in God's ear? Right. You're saying, well, I, I'm not praying it out loud, Pastor. No, they weren't praying it out loud. They were just saying it and God heard it. It was in his ear. Yeah. And so I, I, this is like a, an illumination for me. All I want to do now is like, hey, what do I want to whisper in God's ear that I want to see happening in my life? Lord, I'm strong. I'm full of health, full of strength, Lord God. Every fiber of my body is working, functioning properly in Jesus' name. Amen. You might be, but Pastor, I got achy legs. I got achy. Don't speak achy legs. Speak, uh, my legs are strong. Speak that my youth is renewed like an eagle. Believe that you're going to soar like never before. Speak the end result. Speak what you want to see happening in your life. Yes. Notice this translation, the 27th version says this. I heard what you said, and as surely as I live, live I will do those very things to you. Are you guys hearing this, church family? Yes. Are you guys hearing this? Now let's go back. I just want you to just get the, the picture here a little bit. Let's go to the 13th chapter. And we got a lot to say on this, but we'll probably be teaching on this for a little bit. My prayer is for me. I need it. I don't know about you. I need a tune up here. All right. Okay. I'm being honest. I'm going to get it in Jesus name. <laughs> Are you hearing you? And we, we got to be, we got to understand that our words have such power. They have such power. And you can't, and I can't just be flippant with our words. Just saying what we want to say, venting. Are you hearing me, church family? You, you can't, what you want to do, what by the grace of God, and we're going to see it, is you want to get to a place and say, okay, I'm only going to speak my faith out. I'm only going to speak what I want to see happening in my life. And you're going to guard your mouth. And you're going to go, Lord, I don't want to just blurt out things. I'm going to speak my faith. In the midst of those times, the midst of those times, like the psalmist, uh, uh, the, the, uh, the psalmist I think it's uh, Isaiah, So the time that I'm afraid, I will trust you, Lord. I will speak my faith. Amen. That doesn't mean you and I are not going to feel things or experiencing things, but you and I have to get to a place. We're going to go, Lord, I'm going to speak my faith. In the midst of the storm, I'm going to say, peace, be still. I'm not going to say storm, 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 wind, wind, wind. Peace, be still. You might be shaken inside. Fear might be trying to grip you. But by the grace of God, get a hold of your mouth and speak forth your faith. <laughs> That's a visitor doing that, isn't it great? <laughs> isn't it great? All right, let's go to the scripture. All right. All right. I'm sorry, Cassie. Uh, verse number uh, 17. We'll start with verse 17. And so, if you start the first part of this chapter, he says that, you know, that they, they're right, this is it's so cool, God's so merciful. They're at the brink of the promised land. Even though they messed up quite a few times, God's like, you know what? I want to get you guys in there. And he said, I want you to take a leader from each one of the tribes, and you can read it. And he said, we're going to send out one person, 12, 12, 12 leaders from the 12 tribes, and you're going to go in there and you're going to spy out the land. And notice what Moses says to them. He says, you're going to go into the, the, the promised land. And it says, he sent the spies out to the land of Canaan and said, he said, I want you to go up this land, go south, go up the mountains. Look at verse 18. How many love the word? He said, he said, because uh, and, and, I want you to see the land. How many know God wants us to see the promises of God? That's the first step of us seeing. You need to see yourself strong. You need to see yourself rich, blessed, prosperous. You need to see yourself the righteousness of God. You need to see yourself as a person of value and purpose. You need to see it. You need to get inner eyes, inner vision, and start seeing yourself differently. How do you get that? You go to the Word. You meditate on the Word. You think about the Word and let that Word become your sight. That's how we walk by faith and not by sight. We don't walk by what we see. We walk by what we believe and what we get from, how do we get what we believe? It's from the word. And when you look at the word and you meditate, you see yourself in the word. You see yourself. When he says, by his stripes, you were healed. You see yourself as healed. You, you, you can't see yourself, uh, your, your vision of yourself beaten up and broken in pain. You're like, but pastor, I'm there. No, get your vision up and see yourself. See the promised land. If you've got no finances, you're like, pastor, it's, we're struggling just to pay the bills. We all start somewhere, but I'm here to tell you, you'll get somewhere if you're trusting God. 
And as you trust God, I'm telling you, you'll, you'll start seeing the blessing of the Lord. And you start seeing yourself buying cars cash. You start seeing yourself buying homes cash. You start seeing yourself giving big chunks to the kingdom. Glory to God. If you're like, I wish I had something to give. Start seeing yourself. I'm seeing myself giving thousands of dollars into the kingdom of God. I see myself driving that new car. You start seeing the promised land. See yourself be, get the vision. Because I'm here to tell you, the devil will try to get you and I a vision. And his vision for your life is a vision of defeat, discouragement, lack, fear. Any thought you get from the devil is always like, you're, you're not going to make it. How terrible you are. Right? Amen. It's not he loves you, yeah, yeah, yeah. He don't love you, yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> right? And he, dude, the devil's just mean. Yes. Yeah. He doesn't play nice. He'll beat you up. Yeah. Tell you how bad you are. Make you feel like you're worthless. But I'm going to tell you, when you start listening to God, your chin will start to go up. And you'll start feeling what you are. You're a king and priest, holy unto our God. You're bought, bought, sanctified on your way to heaven. And if you were the only person in this world, Jesus would have died for you. And he's not a respecter of anybody or any person. He loves you just as much as he loves the, the big, somebody you might hold in high esteem. He loves you just as much. And he'll do for you just as much. Are you hearing me? You say, well, Pastor Michael, I don't got education. That doesn't mean nothing. I'm, I'm not discouraged. You should get education, right? If you could, I, all my kids got educated. And I, when they were in my house, I said, they didn't have a choice. Get educated. Why? This is how the world works, you know? You know, just can't get sit around and play bongos. Get a job. You know, you got to get a job and get, it, get out there and get educated. Or whatever, whatever. Get a skill, you know, th or a trade. You know, people can make a lot of money doing uh, trades nowadays, <laughs> right? <laughs> and we need trades, right? I don't know about you. I thank God for the plumber, the electricians and people. I don't have that skill. My wife doesn't want me to have that skill. She wants me to live a little longer. <laughs> Every time I'm a good helper, right? I'm a good helper. Ed Bear was helping me out with something. I was holding an umbrella for him, you know, keep him out of the sun, you know. <laughs> I'll do it. I don't care. We'll help people, right? We'll help people. He said, go in there, and he said, see the people that dwell there. You go see if they're strong, see if they're weak, see if they're few, see if they're many. Go to the next verse. And, and he said, he said and, and, and what, God, what land is it? Whether it be good, whether it be bad, what the cities be? Where do they dwell? Do they dwell in tents? Do they dwell in houses? What? Go check it out. Spy it out. Verse number 20. He goes, and he says, and what the land is, whether it be fat or lean, whether there be wood, whether there, it's good, he says, or, or not, he says, but he tells them something right from the beginning. He says, and, and be of good courage. You know, when God tells you to be of good courage, it's for a reason. Notice what this word, word courage is. I want you to see it. Slide number two. He's telling them, he says, go check out the land. You're going to see some things, but I want you to be of good courage. The word courage here, there's the Hebrew word. It literally means to be strengthened, to, to prevail, to be hardened, to be courageous, to be firm, to, to be resolute, to be purposeful, to be determined, to be unwavering. It means to grab a hold tightly. When God, what God was telling them to do, he said, listen, you're going to go in there. And you're gonna, he was giving them a heads up in the beginning. You're going to see some things that you're going to need to be couraged, have courage. You're going to need to be strong and purposeful, unwavering. He's given them a heads up. And I believe that's the heads up God's given to all of us. When you want to possess and you want to promise and you want to enter into what God has for you, he's saying, be of good courage, man. Be purposeful. Don't, don't be wavering. Grab a hold of it tightly. Why? Because it's going to try to shake you. He said, be of good courage. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. He said, go check it out. Be of good courage. And he said, bring back some of the fruit. Look at verse, uh, Cassie, we're going to skip down to verse number uh, uh, 25, just for the sake of time. So, so they come back now. And so they returned after searching for 40 days. And, and they, they went to Moses and, and uh, they, they come to the congregation and, and, and they brought back word. And, and they showed them the fruit of the land. Look at verse number 27. They come back and they got the fruit. And, and they told him, and said, we came to the land you set us out. And, and they said, man, surely this is a land that flows with milk and honey. Boy, this is a good place. 
And he said, this is the fruit. They came back with a big hunk, just, just, just big harvest. It was just, they come back and go, and this is the fruit of the land. This, this is a good land. Look at verse number 28. But notice these next words that they say. Nevertheless. Nevertheless. What are they starting to do? The people be strong. They, they dwell in the land. The cities are walled. They're, 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 they're great. The, 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 and they said, man, the children of Anak are there. So, so notice this. They go back. They see the land. They say it's a good land. And, and, but then they use this word nevertheless. I want you to see the Hebrew word for this. Slide number three. The Hebrew word for this means ceasing, finality, a coming to an end. When you and I use that word nevertheless, no matter how much and how great and how wonderful you think the promise of God is, what you are saying is, and all, all that doesn't matter, that's coming to an end because the problems are bigger than the promise. It's coming to an end. Even though it sounds really good, even though it sounds wonderful, even though God wants to give it to us, it's not going to happen. It's coming to an end. And you know what? That's exactly what they were saying that's exactly what they were speaking in God's ear. And that's exactly what happened to them. It came to an end. They stopped. They went no further. And for the next 40 years, they were wandering around in the wilderness. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. I mean, love the word. He said, man, he, says, he said, nevertheless, there's giants. The children of Anak are there. Look at verse number 29. He said, the Anaks dwell in the land of the south and Hittites and the Jebusites and, and, uh, and all these people, the, all these pe people are there. Now look at verse number 30. So what's, what's happening here? This is the danger. This is what can happen to you and me. God shows us something. Instead of focusing on the fruit, instead of fo focusing on the milk and honey, the devil's going to try to get you and I to focus on the problems, the obstacles. The doctor says there's no hope. There's no way it can be done. There's nothing you can do. Never happened before. But wait a minute, God's word says this. No, 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 no. This is how it's going to be. Never going to change. And if the devil can get you focusing on the wrong thing, that's where you stop. I mean, they started out really good. Hey, it's a great land flowing with milk and honey. Nevertheless, that's all coming to an end. And so what's starting to happen? They're speaking these words to the congregation. Joshua and Caleb are there. They're people of faith. And the ten are going, man, there's giants there. Man, they're just so big. Man, the cities are walled. There's no way we can do it. And all of a sudden, the crowd went from happy to getting nervous. And notice these words. It said, And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, Let us go up at once and possess it, for, for we're all able to do it. Notice the word here for stilled. I want you to see it. He said, Caleb stilled the people. Here, I love it. Because he's, 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 what's happening here? They're hearing the wrong report. They're getting all stirred up. And so Caleb says, he's commanding them, shut up. He's telling them, hold your tongue. That's right. Hold your tongue. Come on. What's he trying to do? He's trying to help them. Hey, hey, hold your tongue. We need some Caleb's and Joshua's in our life that are going to tell us, hey, don't, don't, don't get all stirred up. Hey, hold your tongue. Hallelujah. Sorry for yelling, but I like it. I'm sorry. <laughs> Do you, need, do, you, do you need some people in your life that tell you, yes. hold your tongue, yes. hold your tongue. Amen. But you don't understand. There's giants, hold your tongue. You don't understand what they did to me. Hold your tongue. Well, I need more people. I, I want that in my life. Yes. I thank God for my dear wife. There's times I do it to her. She does it to me. She probably more to me than her, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> hold your tongue. Yes. Shh. But you don't understand how I feel. Shh. Is this helping anybody? Yes. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. <laughs> the scripture, sister. 
And Caleb's still the people. Notice, but this is a different person. He saw the same cities. He saw the same problems. Can you and I be people of faith that in the midst of a crowd of people going that way, we can be people that are going God's way? He said, hey, stop it, stop it. Hold, hold your tongue, hold your tongue. He said, hold your tongue. He said, let us go up at once. Let's go now, let's move it, let's go. That's faith. You know, when you're in faith, you're not thinking about it, overanalyzing. Sometimes when you take a step of faith, there's been times in my life that we've done some things that were pretty stupid naturally. And she's the mm -hmm. I remember when me and my wife, got, uh, we were dating, you know, and the Lord spoke to me very clearly. I mean, I heard a voice in my heart. She's the one. There she is. And we dated. And we were going we to have a wedding. We were going to plan a wedding. And I'll tell you what, I got so, I got so nervous about it. <laughs> I did. I did. I, my mother, I just whatever, I, whatever I was thinking, you know, I was young, getting married, the weight of it, you know. I know I heard God say she's the one, but I'm like, uh, uh. we'd plan a wedding. She was all like, come on, let's go. She's like, yeah. <laughs> and I'm like, uh, yeah, this is how I was. I mean, I really was like, I, was, I would have been dragged to the altar, you know. And, uh, and so we called it off. We, had, we started getting it all going. We, we called it off. I said, honey, I can't do it. I can't do it. I can't do it. And this was like, we we're going to help get married like in February. And then all of a sudden, uh, March came along. We, we were just kind of resting alone. We had the marriage license, you know. And the Lord spoke to my heart in the day. He said, he said he actually it was in that day. He spoke to me. He said, Michael, he said, you're going to just have to jump into this one. <laughs> I'm serious. He, told, he said, you're going to have to, you can't, you, you can't, you're not going to, you can't overthink this one now. You, I, I, I showed you that she's yours and she's a beautiful girl and you've known her. You're, you're going to have to trust me, but you, you can't wait for, now I'm not saying everybody should do this. You understand? This is just me. Everybody, this is my story. And he said, <laughs> and he's, he said, yeah, I, and they, if they came home and said, dad, I, they got, they eloped. I'd be happy for him. You know, what am I going to do? But anyways, it's like the Lord said, just, you're going to have to jump into it. I had to push all those fears out. And so one day we were sitting in a park. It was a very rare, beautiful day in Syracuse. And we're sitting there. <laughs> Anybody from upstate New York knows. And, and, and I, I looked at each other. I said, honey, this is the day. We've got to get married. Now, we ended up, we called her, her, her brother up. And he said, uh, let me call dad and see if he knows somebody. We can find somebody to get you guys married. And so he called dad. I think your brother did, Dana. He called, called it was a judge that they knew. And, me, and so she called her friend up and her brother came there. And we just went to the thing and got married. And you're like, well, pastor, and, and don't encourage everybody to do that. But what I'm saying, in my mind, when I saw all the giants of marriage, it was, it was holding me back. And the Lord said, you got to go up at once. You got to just, and you know what? We've been married now for 34 years. <laughs> It didn't make a lot of sense at that time, but you know, we stuck together, we're sticking together, and we're going to be together, and what we started together, we're going to finish together, and we're going to go up to glory together in Jesus' name. Yeah, have you ever had, but has anybody ever you know, had a situation like that where you just feel like God just tells you to do something, and you're like, oh, it doesn't make any sense, there's too many giants here, but you know in your heart... And see, faith is like that. Caleb, as far as he was concerned, that was his. And we could read it later down the road where Caleb was 40 years later. He's like, hey, I'm ready to go. I've been waiting 40 years for this. I've been waiting for this mountain. He said, let us go up. He said, let us go up at once and possess it. Notice the word for possess here. Slide number five. We're, we're doing good this morning. I don't know how far we're going to get, but I'm liking it. He said, come on, let's go possess the land. The word possess means this. It means to occupy by driving out previous tenants <laughs> and possessing in their place. <laughs> what does that mean? <laughs> what is he saying there? That's faith. Yep. He's saying, hey, let's go possess it. We're going to drive them out. He saw the same giants. He saw the same strongholds. He saw the same cities. And what does he say? Let's go up at once. Let's drive them out. Out. They're sitting in my car. They're living in my home. 
That's a part of taking what God has for us. It's possessing it. Sometimes you got to just say, I'm driving it out. I'm taking you. In the name of Jesus, I'm laying hold to this. Some people just want to go, kumbaya, my Lord, kumbaya, my Lord. Just let it come to me. Some things come to you, but there's other things you've got to take it. Jesus said it like this. The kingdom of heaven has suffered violence, and the violent take it by force. And sometimes you just got to just buck up and go, I'm taking it. I'm putting my feet on that ground. Just like God said to Joshua years later. He said, every place the sole of your foot you put your feet on, that have I given you. What are you and I putting our feet on? Are you guys hearing this? Look at the scripture. Go back to the scripture. He said, let us go up at once and possess it, for we are what? Well able. Everybody say well able. Cassie, put up the New Living Translation. Are we having fun today? Are we having fun? You guys are going to come back, right? Because we're going to have to teach on this some more. I, can't, I got so much notes here. We're not going to get nearly as far. But Caleb, what did he try to do? He tried to encourage the people as they stood before Moses. Come on, let us go up and take the land. He said, we can certainly conquer it. Amen. Are you guys hearing this? Did you hear faith in that? Hear what he's vocalizing? Him and Joshua, as we're going to see, they were the only two speaking words of faith. And they're the only two that actually get in there. Because they were whispering God in God's ear, faith words. Look at uh, slide number six, guys. Hallelujah. Now, Caleb, this is the common English part. He says, he says, and Caleb, what was he had to calm the people before the Lord. He said, calm down, calm down. We must, we got to do this. We got to, if we want it, we got to, we must go up and take possession of it. Why? Because we're more, he's putting God in, we, we can do this. The Darby translates to this. And Caleb stilled the people before Moses and said, let us go, let's go boldly. Let's go boldly. Are you guys hearing this? Put it up in the message Bible, my dear sister. Oh, we getting it. I, we... <laughs> I love the message. What was Caleb? The people are all stirred up. The word come, the message says, and, Mo, and Caleb interrupted. He called for silence before Moses. He said, let us go up at once and take the land. Now, let's go do it now. We can do it. Go back to this, go to verse 31, Cassie. But everybody say, But. Boy, it's 10 to 2. You got two people, faith people. You got, is that, is that kind of typical of our life sometimes? Yeah. How precious it is to have people around you that are going to go, you can do it. Amen. God's, God's Amen. able. You, you're going to get a lot of people going around you going, oh, you poor thing. Oh, you just buck up, boy. Life will get better maybe someday. You can't expect everything. Very rare to find people go, hey, 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 hey. You can do it, man. You can do it. You can do it. And when you find that and you get those kind of faith buddies, man, treasure those faith buddies. Yes. Treasure those people around you and go, thumbs up, buddy. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. You can do it. Now, it doesn't look good. Just, <laughs> it doesn't look good to you. I see the same thing you're seeing. And I understand what you're seeing. But you know what? God is faithful. Amen. <laughs> right? God is faithful. And he said, and they went up. And, and, but, but these other people now notice now. The people had a choice. The congregation had a choice. Just like you and I have a choice. We have a choice to listen to faith. We have a choice to listen to fear. Caleb goes, come on, we can do this. We can do it. God's with us. We can go possess this. He said, but the men that went with them said, we are what? We're not able to go against the people. They're stronger than us. Notice the word for not able. Notice what they were saying. Slide number seven. Stay with me just a little bit. We'll just get through the 13th chapter. We'll get to the 14th next week. He said, we're not able. This is what they were confessing. This is what the people believed. They were not able to gain. They were not able to accomplish. They were not able to endure. This is how that word was used. They were not able to reach. They were not able to prevail. They were not able to overcome. They were not able to be victorious. That's what they were saying. That's what they believed. They're like, we're not able to do it. 
And if this is what's in your mind and my mind when you're facing something, if you're sitting there going, there's no way we're not able to do it. There's no way we can gain. There's no way we can reach. There's no way we can endure this. There's no way we can overcome. There's no way we're, we can be victorious. Ah, you're speaking just like they were. This is what they were saying, and this is exactly what they got. They weren't able to gain. They weren't able to reach. They weren't able to overcome. They weren't able to be victorious because it started with their belief. It started with what they were saying. Go back to the scripture, my dear sister. He goes, man, because these people are stronger than us. Look at verse number 32. And, and, and he says, in, the, in, the, in the, tw the 10, they brought back an evil report of the land which they had searched out unto the people, the children of Israel, saying, the land through which we've gone to search it is a land that eats up the inhabitants thereof. How would they know that? There was like some kind of, uh, one of those fly tra Venus fly traps, or those, those plants that just eat people. And he said, and all the people they saw are men of great stature. It says, they brought an evil report. Notice what the word evil report is. I want you to see it. Slide number eight, guys. <clears throat> the word evil means, in this particular case, it means, it means whispering defamation the act of damaging the good reputation of someone to slander or, or libel. So what were they saying? They're bringing an evil report. They're, they were slandering God. Wow. Like when we start talking this way, yeah. it's almost like slandering our God. Whispering, well, you might think, well, I'm just saying it about the problem. But what you're saying is that problem's bigger than our God. Right, so you're, right. you're, you're ruining, you're, you're damaging the good reputation of God. That's, right. That's what they were doing. He said, they brought an evil report. They're damaging the good reputation of God. They're slandering God. Are you guys hearing this this morning? Yep. Is the Lord helping us this morning? Yes. Are you guys getting it this morning? Yes. Look at that scripture in uh, the Message Bible, Cassie. Hallelujah. The message says it like this. They spread scary rumors among the people of Israel. They said, we scouted out the land from one end to the other. It's a land that swallows people whole. Everyone we saw was huge. <laughs> Can you get the picture here? Isn't this just how the devil plays with our minds? Yes. Have you ever been in a situation, you know, something comes up and, and, a, and all of a sudden the devil will tell you, Oh, they don't like me, or this person's that, or maybe you think it's your boss. And then you just let things play out, and you don't make a big deal about it. And then you get on the other side of it, and you go, my goodness, the devil was talking to my head. You know he'll talk to you? And it's usually how bad it is, how you know, there's no way it's going to happen. The, the land swallows up people whole. <laughs> It must have been, are you getting the picture? Can you see, can you, can you see how the devil can get your mind? Has it, ever, has it happened to any other person beside me? Well, all of a sudden your, your mind just starts thinking the absolute worst. And it's like the worst case scenarios. You almost think it's you, but it's the devil throwing those things in your head. How bad it is. Look at verse 33, my dear friend. He says, and, and he goes, and not only that, we saw the giants, the son of Anak, which come of the giants. And we, we were in our, notice this, we were in our own sight. See, what were they thinking about themselves? That we're just like little grasshoppers. And then, then they get, their minds playing tricks. And so we were in their sight. They didn't even talk to these people. They never asked them, oh, I just want to interview right now. What do you think of the children of Israel? Yeah, we think they're like little grasshoppers. They never talked to anybody. It wasn't on the news. It wasn't on any podcast or anything. It was nothing. It was just, but in their mind, all of a sudden they're thinking the absolute worst. Are you hearing me? Can your mind go cuckoo? Oh, we got a lot more to say in this. Let me just leave you with a good thought here. Let's go to Proverbs 30, verse 32. This is it. We'll close with this. I just got to just leave you happy, a little happy and help you. Just help you a little bit. Can we, we're believing to be helped this morning, right? All right, now listen. This is Proverbs 30, verse number 32. It says, if thou hast done foolishly in lifting up thyself, notice this next phrase, or if thou hast thought evil. If you thought evil, what are you supposed to do? 
Lay your hand on your mouth. Now look at slide number 24. If you thought evil, if a thought comes to you, how many of the thoughts are going to come to you and me? The word thought. It said, if you thought evil, it means to have a thought. Fix your thought upon. It means to plot. Devise a plan of action. Usually with evil, it's not good. If you thought evil, if you think, thought of evil comes in your mind. Comes there. And I'm here to tell you, there's been times, and I've grown in this by the grace of God, there's been times before I used to go, a thought would come and it'd go right out of my mouth. Yeah. Have you ever been that way? Yeah. Some would come, it just goes right out, man. No filters. Until I learned after a while, I'm like, dog, I'm, I'm not, <laughs> I shouldn't be saying that. It got me in trouble a few times. Before, even before I was saved, it just was natural for me to just talk stupid. Thought would come, just say it. Just say my mind. Now, thought comes, what should you do? If a thought comes to your mind, it's not good, what should you do? And you want to say it. You're with a bunch of people and you knew you got the juicy story. You could say something that make that person look bad and you'd be like the, well, you'd have the whole conversation for about five minutes. What should you do? What should you do? You should grab your hand and should do what? What if you're sitting there and you're like, I'm believing God for healing and the devil's telling you, there's no way, trying to put fear inside of you and you just want to, we've all been there, just want to start speaking it out. What should you do? Get, get your, what should you do? Get your hand... What if you're tempted to say something you don't want to see happening in your life? Cover your mouth. Don't speak it. Another, yeah, you hear me? You say, oh, no, 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 remember the power of your word. Cover your mouth. What, what do you and I want to hear, have God do for us? We want him to, what we're saying. So whatever we're saying, we go, I don't want that to happen in my life. I remember one brother was saying, he was teaching on what I'm teaching on. You start talking about the power of our words. People are like, yes, amen. Glory to God. The word's got power. You'll have what you say. Say to the mountain. Said later, he's in the restroom talking to somebody. Whew, great service today. This, this cold's going to kill me. <laughs> you just heard a faith message. <laughs> we all have stories like that. We, we all know people. I've heard people tell me, they're like, Pastor, you preach up a good faith message and they get in the car and we're like, didn't you just hear Pastor? What was the word? He just gave you the word. Yeah. You get out there and you get in your car, oh, this piece of junk. I'm always driving junk. What a piece of junk I got. No, you thank God for that car. You call that car blessed and say it is blessed as long as I need it and pray for the next person so you don't want a bad rep. So Lord, I always pray that. Lord, the next car I give it to you, blessed for the next person. So when you get tempted and I get tempted to speak something, what do you got to do? Speak what you want. Right, yeah. Blessed. Yeah. Highly favored. Yes. Walking in the blessing of the Lord. Hallelujah. And if something comes your way, you're like, Pastor, no, no. Because Jesus said it, not Pastor Michael. He said, if you speak to the mountain, tell it to go. Believe in your heart that what you say, what you say will come to pass. You'll have, I'll have, whatsoever we say. Whatsoever we saith. Stand with me to your feet. You guys are awesome. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Say this with me. Say, I got a spirit of faith. I got a spirit of faith. And I speak. And I speak. So right now, I'm going to speak. I speak over my body. I say, body, you are strong. Body, you are healthy. Blood. You flow normally. Heart, you beat regularly. Organs, you function properly. I am strong. I am strong. My youth is renewed like the eagle. I am strong. I am strong. I am strong. I speak to my wallet right now. I say full, blessed. I speak to my storehouses. Blessed, overflowing. I'm rich. I'm rich. I have more than enough. I'm blessed. Coming, going.
Thank you. You're the only one. I'm here blessed coming and going. <laughs> going, going. Right? Bless. Say, I'm strong. I'm strong. And right now, I speak to that mountain in my life. I say, go. In Jesus' name, be cast into the sea. I speak favor over my life. The favor of God's on my life. I shine. I'm highlighted. People just want to do things for me. Whether they like me or not. Because God's favor is on my life. Say, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever and ever. One more thing. Say, my days are days of purpose. My days are days of destiny. I'm walking in the very perfect will of God. I don't miss it. I don't miss it. I'm his sheep. I hear his voice. And the voice of a stranger, I will not follow. I know God's voice. I recognize God's voice. I follow God's voice. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I'm excited about that. All right, well, turn around, shake hands. And what's happening this week, uh, Wednesday? Does anyone remember besides Bear? Food. Food. <laughs> We're having ziti, right? ZD for your ED, right? All right, God bless you guys. We'll see you Wednesday night. Thank you so much for coming. And if anybody needs any extra prayer, come on.